In this case, our data is inside this file in separate sheets. But besides the sheets with data, we also have extra sheets that they have different information and we don't want to combine. We want to build the query within this same file. I have this empty sheet called all sales where I want to bring my report. Then I have Toronto, Edmonton, Calgary and Ottawa, four different sheets with data here we have an extra sheet called lists where we have a simple table with information, prices for the products that we really don't need for our report today. But this is to, to represent a situation where we have a number of sheets that have the data. In the future, maybe we want to add an extra sheet with more data. It would be desirable that our query is uh, smart enough to understand that an, an extra sheet added here we want it to be added to our set of data, our data and, and be processed together with the other sheets. If I decide to add another sheet here that is not meant to be added to the data, considered data, then uh, I will have to make changes in the query that uh, I will build here. So we want to connect to a file. And it happens that the file is exactly the same where I am. So when we come to data, get data, I have from file, I have from workbook, text files, I have from folder, I don't have from sheet. Recently, this button here that says from table slash range, change name to from sheet. Those of you who have uh, Microsoft 365 Insiders may have that button already available. But in fact, it's not connecting to a sheet. It's, it says from sheet, but in fact, it's still connecting to either a table or a range. The difference between that button and this one is that that new button will be able to recognize ranges produced by dynamic array functions, and this one does not do that yet. But when I say that I want to connect to a sheet, I mean that I, I want Power Query to look at the entire sheet and be able to decide what's the region that has the data. Data, get data from file from workbook. And it will ask me, okay, what's the workbook you want to connect to? And, and this is the one, okay? All sales start, data start, that's the file. So I am providing the path for Power Query to connect to this very exact file. Then we get a list of all the contents from this file. We have the, all the sheets that we can see here. There's no hidden sheets in this case. And we have a table that's that little table with prices that I showed you in sheet lists. We are going to select here, click here, because we don't want to import the sheets separately in separate queries. We want to be able to combine them all. So let's click there and transform data. Uh, we wait for Power Query to open. There we go. Okay, so we have one step, source. Power Query wrote for us this code here, excel.workbook, and then inside this function, file.contents. And inside file.contents, we have the path to this file, and then we have two extra parameters here for the function Excel workbook. Okay, we have a connection to the file, we have a list of all the things. If there were named ranges, they would also show here. So now I don't want to combine or to collect the information from all the elements here. First of all, I only want sheets. So I can come here and I want to, in the kind column that says whether or not each one of these things is a sheet, a table, I just want sheets. So I can come here and, and select table, get uh, sheets only, and pay attention to what we have here. We get table, select rows. This means get me all the rows where in the column kind we have sheet. Okay, that's good. Then from all these sheets, I don't want to have 
all the sheets. I selected all the sheets, but now I don't want them all. I don't want, in particular, I don't want the sheet lists and I don't want the sheet all sales. I want all the other ones. So I'm assuming that these two are the only ones within my file that won't be sheets with data that I want to collect. So I can come to the column name and unselect all sales and unselect lists. Okay. Every time we use filter this way by selecting and selecting things there in the drop down, I strongly advise you to pay attention to the M code because sometimes it generates something that we don't want. In this case, since we did filter twice, Power Query is very common to say that it's lazy. <laughs> that expression is more to the way it runs its code, but it, I think it applies here too. Because since it had two steps in a row to filter rows, it wrote the code to filter, uh, to generate one step only. And it said, okay, all the rows, select rows from the table in the source, which is the previous step, where the column kind is sheet and in the column name, it's different from all sales and different from lists. Okay, perfect. That This is exactly what we want. home close and load to we are going to load to a pivot table report okay on an existing worksheet and i'm going to say use that empty sheet that we had named all sales and put the pivot table there okay and okay and now we can say okay let's put the products across the columns and then the vendor names here in the rows and the quantities in the values we can test our solution let's copy this sheet create a new sheet move our copy create a copy and put it before the sheet lists okay Let's come to our all sales and refresh and see if we get that or not. Right click, refresh. We didn't get Claudia or uh, Bertha there. The reason is because I didn't save the file after I changed the data. So Power Query needs the file to be saved in order to be able to read the information from it. Okay, so let's save the file and then right click, refresh. Now we get Berta and Claudia there, two units in all the products. So another tip there, you need to be sure that your file is saved uh, because Power Query will read the, the last saved version of the file. 